Hello guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make a baseball jacket or a varsity jacket like the one you see I'm wearing on this picture. Alright, um, so it's actually easier than it looks. So I'm going to be doing this um, in a series um, in two videos actually. So in this video I'm going to show you how to cut it and then how to do some parts of it and then in another video I'm going to show you how to complete it. Alright, so just stick with me throughout this tutorial and you learn how to go about it so let's get into it all right so the first thing i would like you to note is that when you're making a jacket like this you make sure that the jacket is is usually bigger than the um, person wearing it like way bigger than the person wearing it so for example this video the person chest is 43 so i'm adding 3 to 43 which is going to give me 46 all right so i'm dividing 46 by um by 4 that's the chest measurement now that's what i'm dividing i'm dividing 46 which is the chest measurement by 4 and that will give me um 11.5 so that's my 11.5 there okay and this is a paper so it's not on fold so i just i'm just using a particular it's just a single paper right so the chest 46 divided by 4 is um, 11 and a half so 11 and a half plus one inch for seaming allowance and then i added three quarter inch to it so that three quarter inch i added is for the overlapping allowance at the front just like you do for your shirt okay so let me come again you divide the chest by four you add one inch for seaming allowance and then you add three quarter inches for overlapping of the front because it's going to have a button which is going to overlap at the front so that one inch and um, three quarter inches for the overlapping to so take note that's the same way i cut um shirts all right so if, if you don't have to cut shirts in this my um in this youtube channel my youtube channel there's a um, video where i explain how to cut it so you should go and watch it and you understand what i'm saying as i'm making reference to um how to cut a shirt okay so as you can see this is just my chest measurement i drew completely straight down like this so on this part to get my shoulder stand i'm going to measure um three inches i'm going to measure three inches and then i'll create a slant like this okay create a slant like this so that's my shoulder slant okay then from um somewhere around the middle not exactly at the middle so but somewhere around there i'll measure my the full length of the baseball jacket okay so in this case my full length is 25 okay my full length is 25 however i would like you to note that um i'm using um is a baseball jacket so at the bottom there's a rubber so this is the rubber or a band or whatever you want to call it i'm putting which is two inches rubber size and then half inch for the seaming allowance on the rubber so i'm actually using two inch okay so since i want it to be 25 i'm going to take out that two inch so that by the time i put my rubber it's going to replace it i hope you understand what i mean i believe you do so i'm just taking out the two inches because i'm going to replace it with my rubber take note i took out the exact two inches all right the reason is because i'm going to have a shoulder drop from the back which is going to replace that seaming allowance that i didn't put here okay and if you don't understand what i mean just ask me questions in the um, comment section and i will try to answer as much as as possible as much as i can okay so this is the front part and this is how i've cut it remember i didn't cut the armhole i didn't cut the um collar so this is how I just cut it okay so just follow me so I'm just, i'll just use the front pattern to cut the back pattern just like i do to a native or a shirt or whatever i cut that is the top this is the method i take okay so whatever i do i'll just add <coughs> i'll just add about um four inches to the top i'll just add four inches to the top and remember i took out i three i added three quarter inches to the front I divided the chest by four. I added one inch for seaming allowance, and then I added three quarter inch. So the three quarter inches, you can see, I bring, I brought it out here. Okay, remember I told you it's for um the button overlapping of the button. So this is it. You can see at the front here, I brought it out. Okay, so this is my four inch I drew at the top. This is my four inch I drew at the top. Okay, so I just cut it out, and then cut it this way. You can see the overlapping it. Is some sort of longer than the front the reason is because so that it gives me space for the buttons to balance and then I'll fold my 
four inches at the top to make it overlap with the front with about half inch you can see there about half inch right so this is also I'm, I'm just going to fold um, my button allowance my overlapping allowance like this so that i don't get confused you can see it so by the time i fold the four inches the three quarter inch i added for the overlapping allowance you can see that it's actually equal with the back so and um, what i did is just right okay so at the end of the day i'm not going to be forcing the um, front to overlap themselves because i actually left an allowance for it so this is the actually the right way to cut a shirt if you're not cutting it this way i think you are doing it wrong okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to cut um my shoulder so my shoulder um is and um, the same way i want my shoulder to be big so my shoulder is 19 which is nine and a half plus one inch plus half inch which will give me 10 and then i'll measure the what i have uh, in the vertical line and i'll just bring it down yeah so you know um i'll just connect the line so when i measure the 10 inches it was slanted i'll just measure it in a vertical line and then whatever i get i'll bring it down and then i'll rule it and that's what i just did so my armhole and the guy's muzzle now i use my muzzle to get my armhole the guy's muzzle is 16 um divide the 16 by 2 you get um you get it then you add one and a half to it you give you nine and a half that's what i did here so that is my boss line so for um a baseball jacket or a varsity jacket all you need is all you need is um the boss line okay you don't need to, there's no shape you don't need to give it shape it's mostly straight like this you don't need to give it shape whether you're saying for a lady or for a man this is how you put it there's no shape okay so what you do is you just measure you can see i just cut out my neck the way i'll cut out my neck for a normal kaftan after i've done that then i'll just add a few inches around it because the neck ought to be bigger in than a normal kaftan okay and the reason is because i'm going that same band i put around the i'm going to put at the bottom and at the wrist band area i'm also going to put it at the neck all right so if you check the picture the reference picture you understand what i mean so that's why the neck is usually bigger like this so i'll just cut my armhole like this and that is that about the bodies or bodies i don't know what you call it so that's that about that so the next thing i'm going to do is to cut our sleeve okay so and let me just label it so this is my back pattern this is my back pattern and then we've got the back and the front you can see the, the back the paper is actually not on fold because it's a paper and i'm going to use it to transfer it to my um actual fabric so i'll just measure my armhole using the front pattern so this i got 13 inches so i'll just use it to cut my armhole so to cut my armhole i'll measure five inches from my vertical line i'll measure from my five inches like this and this same method is what i use to cut my kaftan or my shirt okay then you just create a slant because you can actually use a curve to create a slant if you do not use it freehand so this is my 13 inches exactly okay so i just get my full length that's my sleeve length so my sleeve is about um my sleeve is about 25 inches and then just like the waist we're also going to use a band which is still the same two and a half inches half inches for um sewing allowance and then two inches for the wristband the same met method you use that's the same method you use here so here we just take out instead of the taking out the two inches take out the one inch you take out one inch and then the one inch we left is for the seaming allowance okay for this side and then for the shoulder also so i just create a curve like this i know i'm moving too fast if you don't understand ask me questions in the comment section i'll try to answer as much as possible and as soon as possible okay so the same calculation you do for your wristband in your kaftan or shirt or whatever the same calculation i did here which i am um, that's why i might not have one inch instead of the two inches for the wristband so this is my sleeve okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is just to transfer my measurements 
to the fabric but before then let me just explain to you all the fabrics i need so this is my lining i'll be needing my lining for this this ball jacket so this is my lining the same lining you use for a suit then this rubber that i've been using you can see the rubber is stretchy so i'll be using this um this band also i bought two of them and then this is the actual fabric i'll be using you can see the fabric one side is white one white one side is um is ash i don't know how you where you can get this fabric from wherever you are but all right so this is um a fiber you can get this fiber from those people that make um bed sheet or duvets you can make get it from them and buy from them this is fiber it's called fiber you can see it's like it's fluffy sort of they use it to make pillows so everything you need here is two inches fiber two inches the main fabric two inches lining two inches and then the um the wristband the rubber for the wristband and the wristband is also two inches so i've used my pattern to cut my sleeve and the front and the back border is so you can see the sleeve is i cut two of them and i also cut my lining and I also cut my fiber you can see the fiber is also on fold so i cut two of them for right and left sleeve so to cut the lining you can see everywhere is equal but the top but the bottom i mean is longer than that's the bottom of the lining is longer than the sleeve with one inch so this is how to cut it but every other place is equal while for the fiber is bigger than the borders on every side apart from the side that is folded this side but every other side is bigger so take note this is how to cut sorry i'm having better so this is how to cut the fiber okay then for the front oh sorry this is the back so for the back pattern you also use your pattern paper to cut the main fabric which is you can see is on fold so that i can cut my back pattern properly so for this one for the back for the lining everywhere you can see i cut for the lining part everywhere is equal but only the side is bigger than the body of the main fabric by one inch also and then for the fiber is bigger than the back is bigger than the main fabric by all sides apart from this side that is folded on fold okay then we we'll go to the front so this is my lining for the front and then the front the main front is uh, this is the main front is on fold because we can want to cut the left and the right at the same time so it's on fold and then this is my lining so just like we did to the back everywhere on the lining part is equal apart from the side which are going to leave one inch you can see everywhere is equal apart from the side which has one inch and then for the fiber of the front everywhere is bigger than the main body you can see the front the top the armhole the bottom everywhere is big and we cut the fiber two of them for the left front borders and for the right front borders okay so for this next thing you are going to do i'll just use the front pattern to explain to you what i'm going to, to do so i'll just put it this way like this and as you can see on the main um, reference picture i showed you the sort of a line is sewing all through so you can see the sewing goes this way and then it comes this way so sort of a crisscross on the cloth okay if you like you can do any design zigzag like this if you like i can just draw a straight line a slanted line like if you can like i can draw a straight line but for me i'm doing a crisscross okay that's what i want to do so i'll just go ahead and sew it i'll take my time to sew it and this is what i have at the end of the day guys so this is what i have that's when so this is actually or will take most of your time if you can do this this is actually the hardest part of it okay you can see this is the other front i've done it and i've done the same thing for the sleeve and for the back pattern as well all right so this is the um the lining okay so the next thing i'm going to so you can see this is my sleeve here i've done it and then this is my back i've done it as well so this is actually the hardest part so when you are done you can just trim off the excess fiber around it okay so the next thing i want to do now and which is the last thing for this um part i'll just do my pocket of i'll just do my pocket so how i measure it is three inches on this side on this side and then three inches from the bottom 
and then that particular point the three inches three inches point from that point i'll measure six inches upwards or any amount of um, inches how big you want your pocket to be so for me i want it to be three inches so you can see three inches by this side three inches by the, that bottom and then six inches upwards so the same thing i did here so i just go my, uh, to my machine and make a normal single wall wealth pocket and i'll come back to show you the result i'm not going to show how to make a wealth pocket because i believe everybody should be able to do it if you don't know how to do it i have a tutorial on my channel that explains to you how to make this type of wealth pocket so you should go and watch it out and do it okay so this is the wealth pocket and this is how the inside looks sorry i am having cut so the next thing i'm going to do is just to join the shoulder of the back and the side like this and i'll do the same thing for this side i'll join the shoulder and the side like this so i'll do the same thing you can see this is the main fabric i'll do the same thing for the lining i'll create the lining of the back and the lining of the front and i'll join them like i've done here you can see it this is just like a sleeveless shirt but when i'm joining the lining you can see i left a little inches at the armhole so that when i'm fixing the sleeve it will be easy for me so you can see on the borders i did the same thing i left a little inches at the at the top here so that when i'm fixing the sleeve it will be easy on me it will be easier for me okay so that's that so what i'll do next is i'll just um fix my lining like this the good part facing each other and then the bad part of the lining facing outside and then the bad side of the main fabric is already inside so you understand what i mean you can see it the good part of the lining and the main fabric is facing inside okay they are facing each other i mean so the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to sew this side straight up like this and i'm also going to sew this side that's the lining and the main fabric. i'm going to sew this side and that's will be about it for this tutorial okay so this is it you can see i've sewn it i've sewn it that's it that's it but when i'm sewing it you can see i left a little inches at the bottom i didn't sew it completely so you can see i just turned it inside out and this is what we have okay so that's that about this particular tutorial in the part two i'm going to show you how to fix the sleeve the, the neck and the bottom and then we'll be done that's it for this tutorial subscribe to this channel if you've not so that you'll be notified when i drop the part two of this tutorial have a great day